Oh, it, yeah, certainly. By the time someone's noticing their glucose levels creeping up into the low, the low hundreds, one ten, one teen, one hundred teens, etc., it's extraordinarily likely that they have been fighting this battle of insulin resistance. In other words, elevated insulin um, for for ten to twenty years. Yeah, the the best way would be to convince your clinician to measure insulin. Mm -hmm. If someone could go in for their next appointment and just say, "I really want my insulin measured as a part of this this blood panel that you're measuring," you're getting glucose, you're getting lipids, maybe they're getting a few other hormones um, to do like a thyroid check or et, et cetera. Say, could you please just check that insulin box? and measure my insulin levels. Uh, very, very often it, it can be done and insurance will cover it. It's just even physicians, the average physician just simply won't think about it, let alone the patient. So the patient needs to be very well, politely aggressive and saying, please check that box. And if a person does have their insulin levels and they, this is in the U S so the kind of U S units here, if your insulin, if your fasting insulin is six micro units per mil or under, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. an extremely good sign that you're very insulin sensitive. If it's um, up into the teens, kind of high teens, that's a you know a warning sign. There might be a problem. And then if it's into the twenties and beyond, I would say that's almost definitely a problem. I I, I, I give that little wiggle room into the into the teens because insulin, like every hormone, has its own rhythm where it will ebb and flow. And it's possible someone catches it at a high point, putting them let's say into the high teens. But then all the more reason to look at that insulin level and temper or balance it out by looking at the triglyceride to HDL ratio. If that ratio is less than 1.5 and your insulin is say 15, I would say the insulin's higher than you'd like, but we likely, if your triglyceride to HDL ratio is one, which is great, you, we very likely just caught your insulin at a peak and it's actually good. I think a typical course of treatment would be that the diabetic, the person progressing towards type two diabetes would be coming in and their glucose levels are into the higher kind of mid hundreds perhaps, or maybe not even that high. And they would be given a, a therapy like metformin as a first step. And then like all drugs that has diminishing returns and they, it, if still with metformin, insulin is staying into the hundreds, then it would be something like, all right, let's progress to, to insulin and insulin works. And let me elaborate. So the paradigm was, as I outlined, where a person has been living a life of elevated insulin and now the glucose starts to climb. And because we look at type two diabetes as a glucose centric problem, the average clinician will say, well, I don't even, I don't care what the insulin levels are. I don't even know what insulin levels are. Let's just put you on insulin therapy. Now we're going to push your insulin to a super physiological level and it works at lowering the glucose. Glucose comes down and because that is the clinical metric of interest, that would be considered a success. But the great tragedy in that paradigm is the person is already swimming in a sea of insulin and not to get into a different topic, but the chronically elevated insulin is a large contributed, uh, contributor to the insulin resistance in the first place, giving a type two diabetic insulin and hoping it will treat their problem is like giving an alcoholic another glass of wine. In both instances, you're giving them more of the very thing that's causing the problem. Mm -hmm. So in type two diabetes, which at its foundation is a disease of insulin resistance, which is almost in very large part caused by the chronically elevated insulin itself by dumping more insulin into the system. And this is what happens. We make the type two diabetic fatter and sicker. And this has been measured. There is no clinical outcome that is favorably impacted by giving a type two diabetic insulin other than you lower their glucose, but we lower their glucose levels, but they get fatter and they get sicker. The more aggressively a type two diabetic is using insulin to treat their glucose or to, to lower their glucose, they have significant like multiples, two or three times higher risk of dying from heart disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease, let alone gaining 20 pounds over, over six months. Giving a type two diabetic insulin is a wonderful way to make them fat and sick and kill them faster. There's just no other way to say it. Once glucose is elevated into the 100s or the 110s, it is likely they have battled insulin resistance for 10 to 20 years. The best way to check on your metabolic health or insulin sensitivity is to ask your doctor to check your insulin levels. Insurance should cover it. If your fasting insulin is 
six micro units per mil or under, that's awesome. If it's in the teens, that's a warning sign. And if it's in the 20s or more, that's a problem. Insulin has its own rhythm. So if it's in the teens, also check your triglyceride to HDL ratio. And if that is less than 1.5, you're in good shape. If your triglyceride to HDL ratio is less than 1.5 and your insulin is about 15, you're still okay. However, it's better if your triglyceride to HDL ratio is one. The typical conventional treatment for patients with glucose in the mid 100s. Given metformin is the first step. Then let's progress to insulin treatment. Insulin works when pushed to a super physiological level that pushes glucose down. The tragedy is the person is swimming in insulin, but high insulin is the main contributor to insulin resistance in the first place. The tragedy for the person swimming in insulin is that it is like giving an alcoholic another glass of wine, the thing that's causing the problem. Type 2 diabetes, a disease of insulin resistance, is caused by chronic elevated insulin. By dumping more insulin in, we make the patient fatter and sicker. No clinical outcome that is favorably impacted by more insulin. Lower glucose, yes, but you will get fatter and sicker. Adding more insulin results in two to three times higher risk for heart disease, cancer, and Alzheimer's disease, besides likely gaining 20 pounds in six months.